I am now ready to face my public. Elvis is here. When not impersonating Elvis, Sean Gallagher is running a recruitment business worth £31 million. This is 12 years of my hard work. And for this 45-year-old bachelor, charity begins at home. If I want to go and buy something, I don't have to think about it. Now, he's going undercover in Middlesbrough. It's the fastest pie production line in town. <laughs> to look for people who may need his help. Come a little bit more out of your shell with them. Ask some questions, be cheeky. High fives! He'll give away over £100,000 of his own money. When I run, I think she'll be there waiting for me. Even though she isn't there. But the people he meets will help him deal with emotions he's buried for 25 years. <laughs> I've never met someone who's grieving as much today as I still am. Thank you. I can't say right now, but something's changed. Welcome to uh, my world. Afternoon, guys. Football table for those who are the competitive types. <laughs> nice haircut. Not. <laughs> this is 12 years of my hard work. It is me. It's my baby. It was 12 years ago that Sean Gallagher risked his life savings to set up his own IT recruitment agency. And there's nothing this multi-millionaire bachelor likes more than spoiling himself. 3D LED TV, that cost about £8,000. He's just added a penthouse in Spain to his property portfolio. Just love that new car smell. <laughs> and £120,000 Aston Martin is next on his shopping list. If I want to go and buy something, I don't have to think about it. I would just go and do it. But for a man who has everything, success has come with a big price. I had a fiance. We were always going to get married and do the kids thing and all of that. But I find it hard to not be at work. And it was a fairly big contributory factor to the fact that a 17 year relationship went west. Football in 3D. It's pretty awesome, I have to say. With no family of his own to indulge, it's his two nieces, Alexis and Karis, that Sean likes to spoil. They could have whatever they want from me. They're very, very, very precious to me, both of them. So who did you go with? I um, just went for a couple of friends from Guildford. Their mother, Sean's sister, died 25 years ago from an epileptic fit. It was shortly after my second niece was, was born. Have you sorted out? I, I don't talk, well, I, I find it difficult to talk about, so. I mean, what sticks in my mind is holding, holding the christening and the funeral in the same service. Just wrong. Excuse me. You going out for your birthday at all, Karen? I've spent a lot of time feeling that loss and I suppose dealing with it. I don't think he has done that. I would love to get to a point where we could talk about her and joke about her and you know look through photo albums together but for him it's still very very raw. It's extremely raw. Too raw really to be talking about in the past tense. <laughs> For the next eight days, Sean will look for and be introduced to people who may need his help. I don't have my own family, but there is a lot in me to give, and that, that would kind of be nice. And certainly being involved with this, if that's a way of channeling that, then that would give me a great deal of pleasure. No matter how much money he has in the bank, He's potentially not going to look back at 60 and think, well, that was worth spending my life on. I think that thought has definitely crossed his mind. Like, am I going to look back and think, what was it all for? Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost Charles Bivane and that's the hospital. Sean will be living undercover in Middlesbrough. 
This northeast town was once an economic powerhouse, where the steel and shipbuilding industries provided a plentiful supply of jobs and apprenticeships. Can I uh, get a single to Union Street, please? Hello. But the last 30 years have seen serious decline, and it now has the country's highest levels of unemployment. Do you know the way to Craven Street, mate? Street down here. Right. The left comes on the right. Thanks a lot. Sean will be staying in the heart of Middlesbrough, an area blighted by drugs and crime. Just everything's boarded up. It's just unbelievable. Home sweet home. Ah, oh my God. I can't sleep on that, it's just filthy. It's a shithole. Barbed wire. What is all that about? Why hasn't my house got this? It's like a war zone. Whilst looking for people to help, Sean will say he's being filmed for a documentary about a recruitment manager looking for more fulfilling work. Hi, um, I'm Sean. Sean Michaels, pleased to meet you. I've, I've just moved in next door. I was just doing a TV program called Midlife Man. It's about um, people who want to change their career. I mean, am I okay just to wander around here or should I be avoiding places or? When you're walking about with cameras and stuff like that, you've got, uh, you've got a place just over here, Cannon Park, that's a rough area. You've got Groville, that's a rough area. Right, so what is there to do around here? Basically, yeah, there's nothing to do. Day-to-day -day life is just drinking, basically. Somebody put my window through about four weeks ago. Right. It was about one o'clock in the morning. But it was only a week before Christmas the man next door was got burgled. OK. That's not good. No, it's not. No. It's a million miles away from the land of opportunity. What I'm not quite sure about is how I could help. It's quarter to 12. There was a few, uh, bit of knocking this here window. There's a lot of people around here who have just seen me walk with, with the film crew, um, becoming interested in that, so. Just somewhat jittery, to say the least.
looks worse in the day than it does in the night. Recruitment millionaire Sean Gallagher is starting a secret life in Middlesbrough. His mission is to look for people who may need his help. We've got every single version of extra strong lager known to man. There you go. Thank you very much. Can I get a cup of tea, please? Tea. Thank you. I'm just reading an article here about uh, a young kid who has been homeless since he was 14 and um, looks like he's really turned his life around after two or three spells in prison and a few asbos. And it looks like there's this charity called Fairbridge that's helped him do that. Quite like to find out a little bit more about what these guys do. Hello, Wayne Hi Wayne, my name's Sean. Probably Sean calls the centre using his cover story. I'm, I'm, I'm filming a, a TV programme for Channel 4, it's called Midlife Man. Do you have any kind of jobs going or, or, or say, some, some sort of work placement or something? Absolutely, let me come along and uh, we can have a chat and show you around, have a look at uh, some of the activities we've got on today. That's brilliant, thanks a lot Wayne, appreciate it. Care, Sean. Cheers, see you in a bit, bye. For young people in the area, the gaping hole left by unemployment has been filled by high levels of youth crime and drug use. The Teesside branch of Fairbridge works with 13 to 25 year olds that other agencies can't engage. Yeah, hi, can I speak to Wayne, please? Fairbridge manager Wayne Mason has agreed to take Sean on for a trial period. Hi, you Wayne, I'm Sean. Pleased to meet you. How are you? I'm very is good. It, is it all right if we, um, the guys come in? Is that okay? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'll introduce you to um, the staff, first of all. Okay. That's all right. Respect for others, when to respect each other's opinions. Yeah. Staff like Charlotte Fox run workshops to teach young people about the consequences of their behaviour. Folks, I'll introduce Sean. Hi, guys, I'm Sean. Good to meet you. What are you doing? For these teenagers, addiction, violence, and prison are part and parcel of daily life. You're all going to get a sweet in your hand? Don't eat it. What you want to do is put the sweet behind your back, then run round the room and try and seal other people's sweets. Do you all understand? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 right, guys, I think we're done. I'll back, back in the circle. Why do you think we did that game? Yeah. How do you think oh, I felt with no we've, sweets? We've got no sweets. Have you got... Oh, you've oh, you've oh, got all right. I've got three of them. Two sweets. <laughs> Would you say I might be a victim of crime? Yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> do we think it's acceptable to do something no. just, for, just to get a kick? Like you said earlier, at the end of the day, it's your own choice, isn't it? It's all about it's choice. It's all about choice. But there's also the consequence of the victim involved. It's everyone. That's what the whole day's been about, isn't it? Every year, more than 200 young people are referred to Fairbridge. And more than 80% of those return to education or find employment. I thought it was only the Geordie boys that went like bare top on the terraces. <laughs> How come you ended up coming to Fairbridge? I was into drugs. I just wanted to get drunk all the time. I was depressed. My life was just upside down. I was homeless and I'm living in a homeless hostel. Now when yeah. I come here and they help me find the hostel to live in. Since you've been coming to Fairbridge, I mean, uh, what, what, what have you gained from it? What, what's confidence. changed? Confidence. I have the confidence. Because it made me come out and be myself. You get more relaxed, you get with people who you can talk to. So, so where's next for you then? What, what's next? Job. Job, yeah. We're actually going to be going rock scrambling uh, All right. this week. Yeah. It'd be really great no, if, you could, if you could come and get I'd involved on that. So yeah. I want you to um, come a little bit more out of your shell with them. Yeah, get cool. to know right. them a little no, bit more. Ask good. some questions, be cheeky. Thanks Charlotte, bye bye. This is exactly the sort of organisation I was looking for. I was particularly impressed with Charlotte. Something about her that the, the kids connect with. My kind of struggle really is that it is very well organised. Is my help going to make a difference to them or, or is it better channeled somewhere else? I guess there's some more investigation to do. Abby's love. <clears throat> Supporting research into epilepsy. Elvis tribute night. Friday. It's this Friday. Parkway Social Club. My sister had epilepsy. 
and um, in fact it was uh, due to an epileptic fit that well it was an epileptic fit that caused her death so that's yeah I'd, I'd, I'd quite like to know a little bit more about what that charity what Abby's Love's all about Epilepsy, a neurological condition which causes seizures, affects half a million people in the UK. Hi, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's good. Right. Apparently, you're having an Elvis night here on Friday. On Friday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's been run by a charity called Abby's Love. Abby's Love. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you knew um, how I get hold of these guys. Just go out that door there. Yeah. yeah. Like, turn right and go through into the games room. Richard and Tracy Clark set up Abby's Love after their only child died from epilepsy. Hello there. Um, my name's Sean, Sean Michaels. Um, pleased to meet you. You Hi, are? Sean. Richard. Richard. It's my wife, Hi, Tracy. Yeah. Tracy, pleased hey, to meet you, Tracy. I'm doing a documentary for Channel 4. It's called Midlife Man. Yeah. And I understand you guys Ooh. are the people behind Abby's Love. And, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and I'd love to find a little bit more about it. And if, if maybe there's a, a possibility, maybe try and get involved or help out. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. What can I do to give you a hand? There's raffle tickets to sell, there's pie and peas to serve. Can, can I help now? Do you want to help, um, help buying balloons? Balloons, like, tying balloons. Yeah. I'll balloons. help tie balloons, yeah, that's no, no problem. problem. <laughs> 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 We're just small, just raise enough for our local hospital and we help children in our local community. Mm -hmm. um, bed alarms. Yeah, and babies as well. With bed alarms for... Yeah, we have, well, because of what happened to Abby, Abby passed away in her sleep. Right. But I thought Abby was just unconscious. Yeah. And uh, when I got home, there was ambulances, police, and I remember going in the house and she's, she's just laid there and she passed away in her sleep. If we'd have had these alarms, what me and Teresa bought, you can be there if anything does happen. If they have a seizure, yeah. the alarm goes off and you have a little box which you can take anywhere in the house with you. And if we'd have had one, it, well, it, it would have took away a lot of the guilt, wouldn't it? That yeah. Even if we'd have just could have been with, with Abby in the room. Um. Uh, that's, it's, it's great what you're doing. I, I, so I'm, 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 mm. um, just take far, I just need to yeah. go and have a quick yeah, chat no, with these no. guys. When Richard was telling me about Abby, it just brought back a lot of memories for me. Um, I kind of, half of me wanted to just say, hey, I, I know what you're going through. Um, and I, and I, I totally get all your emotions. Um, mentally, I hadn't prepared myself for that conversation. I think I need a little bit of time to kind of come to terms with not only what, what more about what I'm about rather than what they're about, if that makes sense. Richard, it's been, been, nice. it's yeah. been brilliant talking to you. Bye now. Bye. Bag of chips are a pound. I can't even remember the last time I went in a chip shop. Sean started a work placement at youth charity Fairbridge Teesside. And today, he'll be assessed by staff member Charlotte Fox during a trip out of Middlesbrough. Um, oh, it stinks. I want you to support the young people, get to know them, communicate with them, yeah. and we'll be giving you the feedback later on. Yeah, that's cool. So think of it as a, a big extended interview today. Okay. <laughs> Fairbridge believe that they can inspire and enthuse young people by taking them away from the chaos and temptations of urban life. And they use rock scrambling to promote teamwork and self-confidence. It's really calming and calming people are Got really stressful, chaotic lives. It's quite inspiring, really. There are a couple of people be blindfolded. Yeah. The rest of you, Fly they're going to be their eyes. Right, right. And so I'm going blindfold. So I'll guide you through. And I'm not worried at all. Are you worried? For you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll be all right. <laughs>
Sean's putting his trust in 17-year-old Ryan Whitehead, who was asked to leave college after disrupting lessons and verbally abusing staff. Yeah. If you keep going, there's like a little thing to get hold of. It is quite low. Go on, Sean. Go on, Sean. Well done. I'm kind of stuck. You can't get through. No, I need to guide you around here and I'll take it off. Right. Okay. Come this way. But now you're on top of a rock. And come back down. Yeah. Hey! Right. <laughs> nice one, Ray. Thank you, mate. Right. How can we relate that back to when we were doing the workshop around crime? It means a lot be good at escaping prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, when people are getting stuck, what are we doing? We're trying to help, help, help them. Help them help, and yeah. encouraging them to get you, you do need support in life, don't right. you? <laughs> it might look hard, but if you give it a go... It turns out how it looks. Exactly. Right, let's crack on. Sean, been a little bit more vocal with them. Yeah. You know, going, come on, guys, let's get through. Just to get the buzz going a little bit so it doesn't go stale. Yep. Oh, he's there. Come on, Just get on my back. <laughs> go on, yes. There's a human ladder. Go on, Chris. I'm ready to go. Cool. Sean. <laughs> Can't rag his hair, mate. Thank you. Well done. Nice one. <laughs> hey. 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 Well done. High fives! High five. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> How useless am I? That was awesome. I haven't done anything at all like that. I've never done that before in my life. It's 15 years. Do you think these guys can help you get in your job or maybe get some qualifications? Yeah, I think they can. Maybe that should be a goal. I need to do my CV. Hey, mate, I'll help you do your CV. Yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. good. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can I have a quick word? Yeah. Um, I was just talking to Ryan on the way back and uh, talking to him about his desire to try and get a job. Because I like read and write CVs for a living. I just said, I said, offered to try and help him with his CV. Is that all right if I do that maybe through you or... That would be brilliant. whoever. That would be absolutely brilliant. Maybe yeah. we could um, go around his home and... Is that yeah, right? Brilliant. Cool. Be really Appreciate handy. That. Fantastic, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed working with the kids. There's such uh, enthusiasm there. Hey, it's uh, beach sitting down behind a desk down in London. One, two, three. Fairbridge! <laughs> it does seem to be unique in this area and it's catching a section of the community that um, looks to me like it's just being left behind. Hello. Hello, is that Sean? Yes. It's Richard from uh, Hobbies Love. We're going up to have a look at uh, one of our bed lamps. Would you like to come up and have a look at them with us? See how good they are for the family. Richard, mate, I'd love to. Richard and Tracy's epilepsy charity recently gave a local family a bed alarm for their daughter. We asked her if we could like to play. Epilepsy is a condition close to Sean's heart. His only sister died from it over 25 years ago. Hey, Alison. Hey, hey. This is Sean Alison. Alison, Sean, pleased to meet you. Is it all right if the cameras come in? Yeah, you're all right. Sean, this is Vicky. Vicky, Vicky I'm Sean. Sean. Pleased to meet you. You're all right. 21 year old Vicky Charville developed epilepsy as a result of suffering from leukemia. The alarm itself is just yeah. laid under the mattress there. So when Vicky gets in the bed, mm. she's laid on the bed, see it? Vicky, well, Vicky might have a seizure and she'd be wobbling like this. Yeah. Or she leaves the bed. The alarm box in Alison's bedroom mm. will start to bleep. Right. There, there you go. go. There you go. I've left the bed. Yeah. Makes me feel loads better because I know that if I'm having a fit, it's going to alert somebody around the house. Dare I ask how much they are? £500 each. So it's a fair move. It's not a small sum of money, is it? No, but you would pay it. A few weeks ago, before we got the alarm, mm -hmm. been talking to her, went downstairs, had a coffee, and I shouted, see you later, and I just heard this funny, funny noise. Yeah. And um, when I come, she was fitting in the bed. So I know for a fact if I had gone to work... Yeah, she would have just been... No, did. no it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. she would have just she been in bed. she not come out of a fit to continue, so I know for a fact... That she would have been in problems. Yeah, yeah definitely. So it's... It's a godsend. It makes a bit of a difference, oh, doesn't it? Well, it makes a lot to me. I can, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Right, 
They are damn clever. The scenario that Alison just described could have been my own family, right down to every detail. But I've, I've, I've never met anyone who's been in that situation. I think maybe it's time I went and talked to Richard about it. Someone who's, who's as grieving as much today as I still am. Yeah. Come here. Come on, Sean. Get a grip. Recruitment millionaire Sean Gallagher is living undercover in Middlesbrough. Of course, I have a dishwasher at home. This is a first. First in a long, 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 long time. 25 years ago, Sean's sister died from an epileptic fit, and he's become involved with Abby's Love, a local charity who provide epilepsy bed alarms. So, um, what are you looking to get in here? He wants to find out more about the lives of those they help, so he's returning to spend the day with 21-year-old Vicky Charville. Try that on, that'll fit you. Brother Carl or another family member have always got to be on hand in case Vicky has a fit. So he, each of these strips is like one day's worth? Yeah. So I just have one of them on a morning. On a night. Yeah. Two of them on a night. Yeah. Two of them on a morning. And then these are the Motrogy and the other epilepsy medicines. Yeah. So I'll have them on a the morning. And I'll see another one on a the night. These are antibiotics that I take because I suffer from kidney infections okay. due to the lamotrigine. The lamotrigine causes kidney, kidney infections. Infection. Kidney infections cause me to have a fit. So I'm taking these three times a day for a week. So that's like a full circle? Yeah. yeah. So they're what I take every day just to prevent fits coming on. Yeah. That's a lot of tablets. What, what happens if you miss something? There's a really good chance that I'll have a fit. Right. And I'd be lucky if I didn't. For Vicky's mum, Alison, working full time whilst looking after her daughter is a huge strain. When things are bad, um, she's in hospital. Yeah. That's, that's rough. Because you don't know how long it's going to last for. Surely there must be times where you just think, I can't cope anymore. Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. Yeah. Uh, just probably go and sit in the bath and have a cry when nobody knows. Right. Get it out of my system. Then. Just look what other people haven't got. 
up, yeah. And I've still got mine. So when I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself, there's worse things out there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Alison is an amazing lady. She has a lot to cope with in her life, you know, as well as working full time, being a full time mum. You know, the family have an enormous stress and strain with Vicky's epilepsy and, and the pressure that, that puts on the entire family. Although he's spoken to Vicky's family about their suffering, Sean spent 25 years not being able to speak about his sister's death from epilepsy. Richard and Tracy Clark, who run Abby's Love, lost their only daughter to the condition. I think I've decided that I want to go and talk to Richard again, maybe be a little bit more talkative, maybe just see where that leads me. By the law. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Hey. Um. The reason that I'm particularly interested in what you're doing is because I've been there. Um, a long time ago, in fact, nearly 26 years ago, um, I lost my sister to epilepsy. It's something I've never, I've never really been able to confront. She was in bed one night and um, she had a seizure. She suffocated on a pillow and that's how she died. That's sorry, Sean. And you, you say about these alarms, mm. if those things had been around all those years ago, you know, what, what could have been the outcome for, for me and my family? And in particular, um, the two people that are most precious to me, yeah. which are my, my, my nieces. And my youngest niece was only a few weeks old when she died. And that, that is just, just not fair on, on anyone. I oh, know where you are, yeah. If you'd seen me three years ago, Sean, I was drinking a bottle of whiskey a day for nearly a year. I was a complete waste of space. It was no good to trace. Yeah. Or anyone. So I had, all I wanted to do was finish it and go with it. So I had to kick myself up the backside and do something about it. And I controlled my drink. Yeah. I stopped smoking, I started running. And the running rate, you know, it gives, I don't know what it does to you, but when I run, I think, when I get to the end of this run, she'll be there waiting for me. And that pushes me on. If not, she, if not, she isn't there. I know how you feel. I really do. I really do. It creases me up as well. God. I, but I admire you for what you're doing. You're brilliant. You know that. I've only met you like for like oh, five brilliant. minutes. <sighs> you're, you're the first person I've ever met who maybe has an inkling of 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 the pain and I still feel that pain today but it never goes away Sean it never goes away it, it, it's with you till the day you go I just wanted you to know that I understand oh yeah understand before this week you know that was still parked in the dusty place 
meeting Richard and Tracy and talking to them could be, for me, the first step in dealing with all of the stuff, all of the emotions that I've not dealt with in my own personal life. And I'll see where that goes. I can't say right now, but something's changed. All young people come from very different backgrounds. Quite often though, because they aren't in education. As part of his placement with youth charity Fairbridge Teesside, Sean's helping Charlotte Fox on one of her regular home visits to Ryan Whitehead. Let's hope we get the right jar. <laughs> I've done that before. What, gone to the wrong one? Yeah, sat down, started talking, they go, who are Can you? I have a cup of tea? 17 year old Ryan has a history of disruptive behaviour and Sean's agreed to help with his CV. Hello, Hi, Ryan. Ryan. You're right, you mate. are right. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, this is Sean. This is Ryan's mum. I think Ryan's a far better person than his life to date has made him out to be. If I can help him maybe get a job, that will be one small part of giving him what he needs to go and lead a better life. Is that you up there? Yeah. Were you in the uh, cadets yeah. or something? TA. Yeah, in the TA? Yeah. Then I started getting a bit bored of it because it was just the same thing all the time, like marching up and down. Yeah. And then I started getting into like animals and yeah. stuff like that. What type of snake is it? Corn snake. A, a corn snake? Yeah. And it's definitely not poisonous? No, they're not. They're not easy to look after because like, you need to remember exactly when you fed them. What, what do like, you feed them? It, it's mice, like baby mice, like the dead, dead small. I've always wanted to go like, to work at a, like, a zoo or something like that, zoo? or work with reptiles. That's one of the things I want to do today, is try and help you uh, put that CV together. They really enjoyed it, doesn't If you're going to send this to the reptile zoo, you need to try and get on this piece of paper that you, you've gone out of your way to learn how to care for that snake yeah. properly in terms of what, what it Ryan's involvement with Fairbridge has been a big boost to his parents. Um, cheers. Ryan's father cares full time for his yeah. mum, who's been paralysed since she was 12. It is a big relief. Yeah. Because not only do we know where he is and that he's doing something he actually enjoys as well. Yeah. He's more like he's more going, going and, and, and more like he's grow up. It's you know, enough. it seems yeah. like more sensible yeah. and not right. as like as easily led. I mean, there's not as much tension in the house, and yeah. I mean, there's not like I'm not having like to worry every time he goes out the door, like who's he with, what's he doing, what's he yeah. up to. He's totally changed. Right, thanks, Ryan. Right. Cheers, Ray. I'll see you soon, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Sean, pleasure to meet yeah, you, mate. Thank you, and Pauline, lovely yeah, to meet you too. Me. I Charlotte discovered Fairbridge whilst working as a volunteer for a youth offending agency. And she's now been with the charity for three years. And they respond to that. But with cuts of 10% looming, her position is in the balance. I kind of get the impression it's more than a, a job. It, it is more than a job. I do really care about the young people who I work with and, and I'm really passionate about what I do. I mean, we try and give young people an opportunity, but I feel like Fairbridge gave me an opportunity. It's like my first sort of proper job, shall we say. I'd had lots of other little jobs that I wasn't really that passionate about. But this one, I've had the opportunity to grow and develop and to learn new things, and I'm really grateful for that. I think it would be an absolute tragedy if Fairbridge couldn't continue with people such as Charlotte and her colleagues because I've seen firsthand what it can do. Uh, it would be a great loss to the community around here. It's Friday night in Middlesbrough and at the Parkway Social Club they're gearing up for a very special event. Oh. It's the annual Elvis fundraiser for Abby's love. I'll do anything you want me to yeah. do. Good evening, you lucky people. How many can I tempt you with? There you go, 341. Thank you very much. Three pounds. Three pounds, right. Thank you very much. It's the fastest pie production line in town. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Everyone's just so friendly and like Tracy just knows everybody. Elvis. Elvis. Another one. How can you not be impressed? Just look at it. It's brilliant. 
I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for helping me and Tracy get to where we are today. It means a lot to us and we love you all, me, Tracy and Abby. Thank you. Two hours in, and Middlesbrough's secret millionaire is going deeper undercover. Get it down yet. Go on, all the way. Come on, here we go. Elvis is here. The real Elvis is in town. The weird Elvis is in town. No, real, not the weird. No, weird. 871. Oh, never in this world. If someone had told me two weeks ago I was going to be in Middlesbrough on a Friday night after serving 150 pie and peas in an Elvis outfit, I'd have said they were barking mad. I've got a new friend. Sean has come all the way up here to help us. So I want Sean to come up and tell us how much money we've raised tonight. The amount raised tonight, um, 1,300 pounds. Great night, I had a blast. And I feel very privileged to have been let in, really. I still can't stress enough what Richard and Tracy are about. Unbelievable people. I don't think I've actually met many people like them in my entire life. This is my attempt at a uh, semi-skimmed latte, commonly known as milky coffee. When I arrived, I felt very alone, very apprehensive about being in totally new surroundings, 200 miles from home, not knowing anyone. Now I feel comfortable walking around here been embraced by a lot of people, which is very satisfying. As his time in Middlesbrough comes to an end, Sean's facing some big decisions about who he's going to help. Hello Richard, you right, mate? Having seen their fundraising in action, Sean's returning to visit Richard and Tracy at their home. This is our little office, we're working in our bedroom. Yeah. Laptop plugged in there, printer plugged in there. Me sat there, Tracy sat there. <laughs> this was Abby's Christmas present for 2000. And six. Yeah. And we felt Tabby's charity. Oh, sorry. So it gets used for yeah. Abby. And that's our office. I've seen a few offices in my time, but that <laughs> one is. An office in a bedroom. It's um, very portable. Good night, wasn't it? Great night. We couldn't sleep when we got home. Really? I think, I think we were still on a high. And it wasn't 1,300 quid. How much was it? 1,500 quid. 15. And 21 pounds, 49 pence Ooh. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's excellent. Is there a long-term aim for, for this, or is it just literally continue what you're doing? We wanted to buy a piece of machinery, and we need, wanted a plaque with Abby's name on it to say it being donated by Abby Jane Carr. Does I'm no matter? good with names, but I have the name of the machine. The equipment that Richard and Tracy are fundraising for is an EEG machine, a portable monitor that can be used to diagnose epilepsy. We can work on it, even if it takes us a couple of years. Mm. We'll try. <laughs> no, of course you will. <laughs> we will try our best. Tomorrow, Sean will reveal his true identity and how he's going to help the people he's met. I don't think anyone I've met is not worthy. I've been overwhelmed with how open, honest, down-to-earth, genuine the people I've met are. I can't comprehend where they get their zest for life and, and their passion for what they do. I hope what I'm going to do tomorrow will affect them greatly.
It's Sean Gallagher's last day in Middlesbrough. Today, he'll shed his midlife man cover story and give away more than £100,000 of his own money. I think it's incredibly important that Fairbridge continues to do what it's doing today. Hello. What I've seen them do is nothing short of transformational. Right. Having completed a work placement with Fairbridge, Charlotte wants to give him his appraisal. On everything, they marked you four to five, four good to five excellent. So overall, you did brilliant. I'm actually quite taken back, actually. <laughs> um, as well as you doing an appraisal on me, and I, I want to do a little appraisal on you. OK. <laughs> um, I didn't realise when I first arrived here just how important Fairbridge work is um, to the local community. And, and your part, um, and, and others, in that is just um, unbelievable. And that's why I have something for you, Charlotte. For you and for Fairbridge and all the staff. <laughs> I'd like you to have that from me. What do you have? I am an IT recruitment consultant in London but I'm a very successful one, so successful that I am a millionaire. I've been blown away by the work you do. I'm speechless, my heart's going a bit crazy, to be honest. Um, wow, that, that will make such a difference and um, a big relief, I think, <laughs> to, the, to the people who are trying to raise money. It's, it's well, a, well, I've I, never I, seen that much money. I, can't, I don't actually know what it is, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. The £50,000 is good news for manager Wayne Mason, who's feared having to make staff cuts. Look what Sean's just given us. <laughs> Dear me. I can't learn. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm not saying a word. Let's get the rest of the guys to come in. As you know, Sean's been with us for a week, and what he's said is, He'd like to give us this. It's a cheque for £50,000. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Can I give you a look? You can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a pleasure. Hey. to get rid of midlife man. I've disliked using that cover all week. Hi Richard, how are you doing? Okay. I'm talking to Richard and Tracy about some pretty open and honest experiences. And yet on the other hand I'm lying. I think you know meeting you guys has really kind of helped me personally. So I really wanted to say thank you for that. <coughs> However um, I do have a little confession to make. Um, everything I've told you about me is not necessarily true, not a hundred percent. I'm um, I'm a multimillionaire, and I want you to have this with my love, Dan, for Abby's love. Oh, sure. oh. And what that represents to me is 50 bed alarms. Oh, thank you so much. It means so much to us, all of us. Thank you. I am quite serious, I'm honestly. What I also got to thinking was about this EEG machine. Yeah. And I want to help as well with that. Um, and I've also got something else for you. <laughs> I want this to kickstart that push to save for that machine. Oh, my God.
Thank you. You are just special, special people. Thank you. One yeah. thing that I would like to pledge right now is that whatever money you raise this year through your own fundraising, yeah. I will double it. Oh, my God. So maybe you could get that EEG yeah. sooner rather yeah. than later. That'd be good. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll check out. I'll see you very soon. Before he leaves Middlesbrough, there's one more conversation Sean needs to have. I think I've learnt that maybe it's OK to open up a bit and there are people in my life that maybe should talk to a bit more about certain things. For the first time in 25 years, he wants to talk to his niece about her mother. Hello. Hi Alexis, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. How are you getting on? I had an absolute amazing week. It's just been unbelievable. <laughs>